Okay, so in this video, we will determine if the series diverges, converges conditionally, or converges absolutely. So, as n goes from 2 to infinity, ln of n over n cubed is positive. The negative 1 to the n will give us an alternation in sign. So we have here clearly an alternating series where ln of n over n cubed is bn. We could show, one, that this function is eventually decreasing by taking the derivative of ln of x over x cubed and showing that when x is large enough, the derivative is negative, which proves that bn is eventually decreasing. And then we would have to look at the limit of ln of n over n cubed as n tends to infinity. Using L'Hopital's rule once, you will arrive at a limit that is equal to zero, which will prove that this series converges by the alternating series test. But now, I will bypass all of this and look directly at the series of the terms in absolute value, and you will understand why very quickly. So, summing from 2 to infinity, the terms of our sequence in absolute value. Negative 1 to n a power is plus or minus 1. In absolute value, this is 1, so it goes away. And as ln of n over n cubed is positive when n goes from 2 to infinity, we're left with ln of n over n cubed. And now we're asking, does this series converge or diverge? Here you have two options. You see a line, and usually when you see a line, you may think of the integral test. And here you can use the integral test. If you do so, integrating ln of x over x cubed will require integration by parts, and then in the limit, you will also need to use L'Hopital's rule. So it's a fair amount of work. We can here prove that this series does converge, not with the integral test, which as I've said is a bit of work, but we can do much simpler with the direct comparison test. All we have to remind ourselves is to look at the graph of ln of x and x. So y equals x, and y equals ln of x. Ln of 1 is 0. So it's clear from the graph that, since we're looking at from 2 to infinity, that beyond 2, it always is the case, but it's clear that ln of x is smaller than x. Therefore, ln of n is clearly smaller than n. And with this now we're good to go in applying the direct comparison test. So we're summing ln of n over n cubed, I call this an. As n goes from 2 to infinity, the terms are positive. But if I replace now ln of n by n, I make my numerator larger, so the entire fraction becomes larger than the initial fraction. I kept the same denominator, but I've picked now a new larger numerator, so the whole fraction is now larger than the original one. But of course, n over n cubed is quite simply 1 over n squared. This is my bn, my simpler sequence that is larger than, therefore bounding above, the initial sequence. And now we're good to go. So if a n is less than b n for every n, then summing the smaller terms from 2 to infinity, so ln of n over n cubed, will be at most summing the larger terms, 1 over n squared. But this is now a simple p-series where p equals 2,
and 2 is strictly larger than 1. So this B-series converges, therefore is nothing but a real number, so it is finite. And so if we look at the initial series, we have a series of positive terms that is finite, therefore the series converges by the comparison test. of course the comparison test CT. But now think of what we've done. We proved with the help of the comparison test that the series of the terms in absolute value does converge. This is nothing but absolute convergence. And when a series of terms in absolute value converges automatically the series of the terms without the absolute value, so the initial series, also converges by, of course, the absolute convergence test. Because absolute convergence implies convergence. And so here, by bypassing the initial series, we didn't have to use the altering series test we were able to prove quite easily that the series of the absolute value of the terms converges by the direct comparison test. So we have absolute convergence, so the series without the absolute value, so the initial series also converges, again by the alternating convergence test. By, by <laughs> sorry, <laughs> by the absolute convergence test. And so our conclusion is that the initial series converges absolutely. And again, I want to emphasize this. What was nice about our argument is we never proved directly that the series converges. Instead, we proved that the series of the terms in absolute value converges with the comparison test. And because this series converges, automatically the series without the absolute value also converges by of course the absolute convergence test. So whenever you have absolute convergence you have for free convergence of the initial series. And that's it.